Hello, beautiful people. I know that you're here now. I have Mr. Kevin Blatt, who has thankfully accepted my invitation to be part of the live and to have you guys. So you guys better show him some love. It's 3 a.m. in Australia, Linda Glass. Thank you for staying up. <laughs> uh, um, so, Mr. Kevin Blatt, um, please, I'm just going to say something. Siri is sick, but she, I take her to the vet, and she's doing better, and she's going to get treatment, but she had me up all night. But right now, let's talk about Mr. Kevin Blatt. If you can please introduce who you are and what you do. Sure. My name is Kevin Blatt. I go by the uh, by the name KB or K Bizzle. If you're Snoop Dogg out here in, in Los Angeles, he gave me that name. Um, I'm primarily, uh, if you Google me, a what you call a celebrity sex tape broker. But what that really means is many years ago, in 2003, I had released the original Paris Hilton sex tape. And you could imagine my parents were so proud. Uh, and... Uh, because of that, it made me this accidental pornographer slash celebrity sex tape guy where all these other tapes started coming to me. Kim Kardashian, uh, Cameron Diaz, Colin Farrell, Vern Troyer. Cameron Diaz? Um, oh, well, it wasn't really a sex tape as much as it was her topless in her very first shoot when she was 18 years old. And she was leading a guy in a dog collar on a leash around. It was an artistic uh, photo shoot. She was topless, and um, she was actually being extorted. And I ended up helping her out and figuring out who the people were that were shaking her down. They were hiding in Montenegro and bouncing their IPs all over the place to disguise themselves. In so Serbia, it was in Serbia, Montenegro, Montenegro, yeah. Serbia, and Croatia, former Yugoslavia. Oh wow! Yeah, so it was amazing. I didn't even know where Montenegro was at the time. So. <laughs> I got a whole education in that, but more importantly, I got another education, and that was at a time where the adult industry and porn, per se, was kind of dwindling as far as people paying for it. You know, Pornhub and all these other places came out, and they were proliferating all this free content. So all of a sudden, people are shopping me sex tapes that I can't really do anything with because I know people aren't going to pay for it, and it's just going to get ripped off and put online for free. So that's when I started contacting the lawyers and the agents of the celebrities involved. Oh, okay. And okay. I said, hey, you know, maybe we could help each other. Instead of you suing me every other week, let's work <laughs> together. You know, you of make course. money, I make money, the clients get their stuff back, and the public never finds out about it. So yeah. that kind of started this whole new career of reputation management slash crisis management, which I found myself in and I'm doing today at the reputationnd.com. I can make things disappear off the internet. Oh. I could uh, help people that are getting shut down by people that were extorting them. I have legal aspects. I've got private investigators. I've got all kinds of resources at my disposal for anybody out there. doesn't matter if you're in Australia, if you're in Nicaragua. If you've got erroneous information about you online, we can get rid of it for you. And again, I learned this all as a result of working with all these celebrities and getting sued every other week by these celebrities. But these celebrities, okay, let me understand because I don't understand very much about this. I told you before we got on that I'm a huge Ray Donovan fan. Yeah. So for example, Kim Kardashian or Paris Hilton. Yeah. They, they, ha they do these tapes. They're stupid enough to get recorded, right? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. I mean, I don't know why they would do that, you know. And well, that, well, we, we have to clarify stupid. Both of them are billionaires now. And you and I are no, not. We're not. So, so I don't know how stupid it was. I agree with you. Um, when you're young and you're ambitious and you're not famous and you don't have money and you don't have much to lose by doing a sex tape, that's when people would make sex tapes. It became a business model after Paris became so successful, where I started getting all these, what I call d celebrities they're just a level below celebrity, but uh -huh. they, would hit me, they would hit me up and say, I want to put out my own sex tape because I see how much press is generated on TMZ or Daily Mail. So it became a business model where people wanted to use the sex tape to propel their own career. So, so for example, but, but, um, I don't know. Maybe I'm I'm naive in that sense because I would be, I would be 
I mean, I don't think I could show my face anywhere if anything like that ever came out for me. I mean, I, I would be so devastated. I can't see people doing it as a career move, but clearly it worked for some, you know. You know, but one thing about Los Angeles that there's no shortage of, in addition to homeless people, is narcissism. Narcissism is the theme of Los Angeles. You know, showbiz, look at me and you know, social media and YouTube and all the vehicles involved in propelling you to become a bigger star these days has really been advantageous for people like yourself, right? But on the other hand, you're not a narcissist. You don't want to show yourself naked. You don't want to put yourself out there in such a way that um, would embarrass yourself. Whereas the kids coming up today, they have no problems being on TikTok. They have no problems being on YouTube, making fools of themselves. And a lot of people don't realize that this content will reside forever in these search engines and online, and you can't unring the bell. So once you upload that picture of your penis or you upload that sex tape, there's no, there's no way to get it back. There's no, no way. You can't unring that bell, that's for sure. I mean, we help as much as possible, but YouTube is one place you're never going to get something off of. Um, and a lot of the social media places another place you're not going to get with it. Even when after people die, they fight with Facebook and they fight with Twitter and they fight with all these places to get their accounts taken down and the estate can't do it. Yeah. But I want to, this is something that I'm curious about. Okay. For somebody to contact you, Kevin, it's because mm -hmm. they know they've done something. That's, yeah. that's the starting point, right? Because I actually was having this conversation with a friend of mine. I said, why would anybody contact him? Mm -hmm. Unless they know that there's something out there that needs to be sorted. Is that correct? Well, it works both ways. So I'll have people that will contact me and say, hey, I have a video of so-and-so. And it was from when we used to date before she was famous. She was 19. She was 20. Is it worth anything? And very much like the old TV show Sanford and Son, which was a big show here in this country about the junkyards. People come to me thinking that they've got some junk that's worth lots of money, right? Mm -hmm. And then I have to explain to them the legalities involved with the tapes that they possess. Um, copyrights, uh, invasion of privacy, rights of publicity. These are all things I have to explain to a prospective seller so they know what they're getting themselves involved with. So let's say you and I make a sex tape. You would be a 50% copyright holder of that tape, as uh -huh. would I. So the only two people that could really do anything with that tape would be you or myself. Uh -huh. If somebody else were to use your name or my name and sell a sex tape, they would be infringing on your rights of publicity or your trademark, your copyright, providing that you have registered your channel and your name for entertainment purposes, which is what all these celebrities, musicians, rappers, basketball players, all these people do that. So, I know it sounds crazy and it sounds like I'm almost a lawyer and I'm kind of as close to a lawyer as you're going to get if you call me off the street trying to sell something because I'm going to advise you what you can and what you can't do before I'm going to, re to, 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 to lawyer you up with a lawyer that I might recommend or I can silently do a deal directly with their lawyers because they trust me. You know, there's only a handful of lawyers in this town that do this type of work and I work with all of them. Uh, two of them are extremely proficient. Uh, another one's very good. So the whole thing is, you know, you call me up, you've got a tape, you want to sell it. I then evaluate if it has some value. Um, and then I'll either contact the person who involves rep and say, hey, somebody's out there trying to sell a tape of your client. Would you like me to buy it up? Or does your client want to acquire the copyright of the person in question. And most of the time, people kind of know who the person, the perpetrator is that's trying to sell the tape because a lot of people don't make a lot of sex tapes. I had a tape many years ago of uh, Leeton Meester who was on a show called Gossip Girl. And she, it wasn't even a sex tape really. It was just some clowning around with a guy and his penis was out and whatever. <laughs> Yeah. But she knew exactly who the person was that was behind the tape. Again, didn't change the fact that they didn't want it out there. And negotiations start. And before you know it, either you get a lawsuit 
and you get subpoenaed, and then you say, you know what, it's not worth it, and they capitulate. Or they just buy it back quietly through me. So, so the way it works in California, if I understand correctly, is that both parties have to agree for that tape to be made public. Because if one yeah. of the parties is not in agreement, then they can be sued, right? That's correct. So for Paris Hilton, did, did she sue the guy? She sued Rick Solomon. She sued me. Her parents sued me. <laughs> okay. I got sued. And the funny part was that the magic number seemed to be tw- $20 million. Everybody kept suing everybody for $20 million. And to be honest with you, when you don't have $20 million, you don't get too scared about it. I mean, it was scary for me the first time I got sued because I had never been sued before. I'm just a preppy, nice Jewish boy living down in San Diego. I'm living on a golf course. None of my... None of my neighbors knew who I was or what I did. I kind of kept to myself being in the adult business at that time. And um, when the news broke, there was news trucks on my... Um, outside on your my, door? On your yeah, door. on the bluffs outside, outside my front door. And I was literally jumping out my back window and running away from lawyers trying to serve me and media. And that's when I realized this is a pretty big deal. And it wasn't until... I remember the night before I appeared on the Howard Stern show to break the story of the Paris Hilton uh-huh. sex tape. David Letterman's top 10 list that night was the top 10 reasons why Paris Hilton made a sex tape. And it was all comedy. Yeah. But as I, lay, as I laid in bed, knowing that I was about to embark on a media junket, if you will, promoting this tape through our website, sexbrat.com at that time. That's when I realized this is a really big deal. My heart started pounding. I'm like, man, this is a big story. It became the biggest story of 2003. And here we are 20 years later. We're celebrating the 20th anniversary of the Paris Hilton sex tape this year. If somebody would have told me, Paula, that all these years later, we'd still be talking about this, or I'd still be making a living with sex tapes, I would have said there's no way. No way. Yeah, I didn't think people would be dumb enough to continue making tapes. Number one, <laughs> but you know what? You know what changed it all? This. Oh, this the internet, is, yeah, because then everybody's doing it. You know, like a lot. <gasps> well, we used to have cameras. Remember the big, you know, digi beta cams or the handheld cameras that were clunky and it was hard to film stuff. Now you just film this, and you know, you have a sex tape in two seconds, and you hit upload. <laughs> And it's on, uh, it's on YouTube and no problem. I want to ask you, because this is actually quite a good question by Boise Cat. What is What if it's leaked in a foreign jurisdiction, like, for example, Nicaragua or Norway or, well, Canada is too close to the States. But let's say it, that suddenly this tape up pops up in Serbia and Montenegro and not mm-hmm. in the U.S. I mean, would, would you still be able to remove it or, you know, what would happen then? It's still actionable. That was a great question, Boise. Um, you're following different laws. And one particular statute that's involved, and I don't want to bore your viewers to death, but just so they understand how this works, you have to, if you're going to commercially put out a sex tape, you have to have what's called in this country a law, USC 2257. 2257 states, it's two forms of identification that prove that you're over 18 years of age. Because the one thing that nobody wants to get involved with is child pornography or any type of underage. This is how you circumvent that by producing documentation that shows that they are uh, of sound mind. They, they are giving their permission and they're using themselves. Here's my ideas to prove that. Um, if you're in Nicaragua, you don't need 2257. Okay. Because 2257 also states that somebody from the government, if they suspect that somebody's underage or some malfeasance or illegalities are going on, that they could come to a custodian of records office, I think it's 12 or 15 hours out of the day, that hold the records to produce for the government to show that they are over 18. That's only in the United States. So that wouldn't apply in Nicaragua. But if you're putting a sex tape up anywhere in the world, and you're trying to sell it via Visa or MasterCard, now that's where you're going to get shut down immediately because all we have to do is send a legal letter to Visa and MasterCard saying, you know, there's no permission. They don't ask any money and they just want to post it. Now that's a different story. 
That's there's, what I nothing, to... there's nothing to stop somebody from uploading it. Leg- legally, it's it's a long haul to hire a lawyer in Nicaragua or uh, or Montenegro or Australia, and it's very hard to go after people if they're offshore. You know, you're going to have a problem with it. But again, if you send a DMCA notice, which is the Digital Millennium Copyright Act, to YouTube or to the various places, they have to take that content down when you prove to them that they don't have the copyright or they don't have the permission to put it up. Uh But that being said, it's a vicious cycle. So once you get that DMCA notice and and YouTube takes it down. But then it's too late because it's all over the place. Either somebody copied it or the next day somebody re-uploads it and you start the process over again. This happens on Pornhub. It's on Pornhub every day this happens. Oh, I didn't know that. So oh, right. as long as they don't charge, so you, 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 it's harder to go after a person, for example, if they have a tape and then they just upload it. And then the other person has to find out and decide to contact YouTube. And then somebody else can download it and keep uploading the tape until the end of time, basically, right? Pretty much, yeah. It's a vicious cycle. And Kim Kardashian, did she sue the man, the gentleman? Because the gentleman has come out saying that, I think she showed up on Hulu saying, oh my God, he's releasing another tape. And he's like, what are you talking about, woman? I think she he tried to sue her, right? Okay. I'm going to tell you something, and you're going to appreciate this because I'm completely unfiltered. And okay. I know your viewers are going to appreciate this too. Kim Kardashian, is full of shit. Caca. Caca. Okay? Mierda. Uh, Mierda. 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 You get it. She is full of it. The entire family is full of it. That was all scripted for her reality show that's on Hulu. In fact, her lawyer, Marty Singer, had contacted me. Uh, mm. And I believe the cameras were in his office filming the phone call. He knew damn right well there was no other tape being shopped or, or, or trying to be sold. It was just to perpetuate this lie that continues to this day. Vivid Video, when they put out that video, Kim K. Superstar with Ray J. That jewel box and the website have USC 2257, which as I just explained to you, you have to have to put out commercially, which means that Kim Kardashian supplied two forces of, two pieces of identification showing that she was over 18 and gave her permission. Yeah. But why is she attacking this gentleman then so much? Because he's actually because, because he was very, I believe, but then again, I don't know anymore from what you tell me. I think that he was actually genuinely upset, unless I'm wrong, of course. Okay, so Ray J came to me originally to sell that tape. And he said to me at the time that Kim wanted to release it for free. At this time, Kim Kardashian was was basically an assistant to Paris Hilton. She used to organize her, she would organize her closets. And I remember footage of her on TMZ where they were in line to go to a nightclub in Hollywood and Paris got in and Kim didn't. And Paris had to literally go back outside and and coerce the doorman to let her in. That's how much of a nobody she was. Yeah. So she wanted to, after seeing Paris's success with it, she wanted to release it for free. That's when Ray J came to me. I had a meeting with him at lunch. And I said, don't. Please convince her not to. I'll get you one of the biggest deals in the history of, of adult movies. I just did it with Paris. I can do it with you guys. Just trust me. And we shook hands and we said, okay. And uh, we were going to take that deal over to Red Light District Video. And the last second, Kim had told Ray J that... The family was very good friends with Joe Francis. And Joe Francis is the owner of Girls Gone Wild. Girls Gone Wild at that time was one of the biggest adult brands. And his best friend was the owner of Vivid, Stephen Hirsch, who I kind of grew up with, by the way, in Cleveland. It's so weird and incestuous how everybody in the adult business kind of either hails from where I grew up or knows everybody. But what ended up happening was they snaked the deal from me and went around my back. And that's fine. And that's fine. They made a lot of money. You know, God bless them all. They all made a ton of money. They're all happy. And you know what? Everybody, uh, I wish everybody well. Yeah, but that kind of sucks. But, you know, but so, so, you know, it's actually quite terrible. What it bothers me is because 
they have a huge following and these very impressionable young girls are like oh my god Kim Kardashian is being victimized again and blah 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 I mean they have created a thwarted image of what women are and they all have Actually, I do follow Shalon Lester. You know, I love her at bits. Um, and she talks about victim narrative and how she's sick of everybody being a victim because that's what sells. Oh, my God, somebody released a sex tape. Ah! And in the yeah. meantime, it's them doing it, you know, and it's like they never get over it. And I wonder if Kim, because her popularity is a little bit swindling, especially after divorcing Kanye. Or, or yay. I don't know what, what he goes by now. But, you know, and she decided to do a Hulu thing to resuscitate another tape is, am I onto something it, there? It, it's a storyline. It's they're running out of storylines. They're running out of things to do, and they obviously the producer sat down with her and said, "Well, what's the one thing that made you famous and made people interested in you to begin with?" Oh, the sex tape, duh. So let's bring back something about the sex tape. That's gotta, that's gotta provoke people, and and sex sells, and we know that with Pam and Tommy Lee and the success of that TV show. This is going to attract people's attention. You know, I hate to say this, but the general public, we're all so stupid. And we all have the fish hunk in our mouths. We, we believe everything that we read and we see. Hello from Ohio, Wanda. That's where I reside. That's where I grew up. Um, <laughs> I, uh, I really, look, I help make a lot of stupid people famous because for a lot, a lot of, I would say the last 15 years of my life, not only did I circumvent a lot of these stories and make them go away, I also sold stories to TMZ and Daily Mail and other places where I couldn't benefit otherwise. Everything from the Tiger Woods mistresses to Charlie Sheen's meltdown and his hookers. Uh, people would come to me with all kinds of stuff. And, you know, growing up in Ohio, Wanda, you could attest to this. If you find a dollar bill on the ground, you pick it up. And I'm one of those resourceful guys that always try to figure out, okay, which angle, which, what side of the desk do I need to sit on today? Somebody's selling a tape. Do I want to get rid of that tape? Or do I want to put the story of that tape being out for sale on TMZ? Who's going to pay the most? And who's going to make my clients ultimately the happiest? Who's my client going to be? Is it going to be the celebrity? Or is it going to be the person selling me the tape? But but it, but what, what my point is that, for example, let's say I call you and I say, oh, you know what, Kevin? There could be a tape out there. So, But it, for me to call you is because there is something out there. So I want you to either get rid of it or sell it for me or make it disappear. But there is something there. Right. For example, yeah. can I call you and say, somebody may fake a, a tape about me and it's not me. Can, can you threaten them? And that does that happen? Or is, that's not the case? Because if it's a fake well, yeah. tape, it usually go we can, away. We could do that. But now we're entering into a new threshold with this artificial intelligence. AI is going to be a very scary thing. I think you're going to start seeing a lot of sex tapes going out there that aren't real. Or the defense that a lot of the celebrities might have in the future, even if it is real, is they're going to say, that's not me, that's artificial intelligence. Right? Well, yeah, yeah. But, I but, could see that happening. I could see that happening next. The reason why I'm asking you this, because, you know, I talk a lot about Harry and Meghan Markle, right? And 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 there's been quite a lot of rumors. Talking about, talk about full of shit, right? Yeah. <laughs> and then, uh, and then I've been, I've been, I've been, um, how can I say it? I've been, you know, for me, I never saw her as a genuine person, you know, her, selling herself as an Hollywood A-lister. And I got to tell you a lot, the press was very complicit in calling her a Hollywood A-lister. Oh, the Hollywood mm -hmm. actress. Because when I first saw her, I did, had, and I'm Canadian from Toronto. I'm in Toronto and I didn't even know about suits or anything, right? Mm -hmm. And when, and I found out about her because Prince Harry posted uh, something on the royal website that, oh, quick being racist towards my girlfriend or whatever. And I'm like, who is this girlfriend? And it's like this Hollywood A-lister, you know? And I'm like, I know I'm old and I know there's a lot of young and upcoming stars that are suddenly A-listers, you know? But, you know, I know Jennifer Lawrence. I know this and that. And I mean, I mean, when you're an A-lister, you know, Sandaya, I know those, those girls, you know? So I started Googling her and I thought I must have the wrong woman because the only thing that pops up is this supporting role Oh shit! And it's filmed in Toronto. I didn't know that, you know. Yeah. Uh, and then I'm like, it's gotta be the wrong one. And why are they being racist toward this woman? Because to me, she looked white, you know. So <laughs> I thought she was Italian or or something like that. And I heard that she had had a sex 
there was a sex tape about her around. And for some reason, when she started dating Harry, everybody was scared to call her out on it. Everybody. And I mean, people were getting threatened. And I was wondering, what kind of power does this woman have? If it's first, number one, if if there was a sex tape about her, um, if you were contacted. Um, Wait, let's, get rid of the, let's get rid of the word if. Okay. There was a sex tape. Oh, and shit. It shop, and it was shocked to me. And I saw it. And I know oh, it was you her. Saw it. Oh, yeah. But there wasn't a sex tape. Pro- there was a sex tape made way way before Harry, like probably yeah. about 10 or 11 years. So it has Harry. nothing to do with Harry. Just clarify nothing. because people think. Zero to do with Harry. Zero. Um, the sex tape that I was shown and that was attempted to be sold to me from a woman in Toronto who had this tape. When um, was that? What year was that? I'm going to say here. Hold on a second. I'll tell you exactly what year it is. Oh, shit. I love this. Well, I, I contacted her lawyer at the time, and I remember the, the lawyer's name. Hold on. It was Richard Gino. Gino. Okay, it was a 2818 that I contacted him. She was already married to Harry then, 2818. She, she was just no, no, getting she married. She was about to get married. She was about she was, to get married. She got married in May. Uh huh. Yeah, so I wrote to the lawyer. But Again, wait, wait, wait. This, you were contacted. Just I was contacted by, by a woman in Toronto who told did she me identify herself? Yes, but I'm not I'm not going to give her name away. All I'm gonna say is that she had contacted me. She said, I have a tape of a actress who's about to marry a prince, and it's a sex tape, and it's a big deal. And I'm thinking, Prince. You uh, thought the singer? Well, I'm thinking, what country? Like, you know, this prince is all over the place. And I, I didn't even put two and two together that Harry was getting. Because I don't follow these people. I, I didn't at that time. And then she told me the circumstance in, circumstances involved in the case. The circumstances were Megan was with a videographer slash photographer in Miami. What year was that? What year was that that she was with this videographer photographer? Again, I I would just be guessing right now, but I think it was about eight years prior to her meeting. Because she was married. She was with her husband. And there's a very, I, I don't know. See, I don't know that. I don't know any of that. But I'm she dated say, Trevor Engelson. She, dated, she lived with Trevor Engelson, who's a producer in Hollywood. Oh, and I didn't then know she, this. Yeah, she lived with him for 10 years. Uh-huh. And then she married him in Jamaica or some one of these places. They were married for two years and until she she went to f- started filming suits. She was in Toronto for about a year and a half, and then she FedExed him his ring back, saying that they were no longer married. But they lived together for ten years. This is why I wanted to get to that point of when this was made because she was this is interesting. Trevor Engelson, okay. whom she married. Two, and they were married like a year and a half, two years, and then she dumped him. And then she mm-hmm. was in Canada. She FedExed him the ring. She, he was in complete shock. He's actually very well known. He's done movies that you know about, produced. Mm. Um, and then um, this is why I was wondering when she did that because she must have cheated on him. And then she was in Hall- she was in Toronto, and then she started dating Corey Vitello. And then she was dating Harry at the same time she was living with Corey Vitello. So this would this would be way before that. I'm gonna say at least between five and eight years before that. Before the marriage. Yes. So we're talking 2018. So we're talking 2012. Maybe around 2011, 2012. Again, I'm guessing because I can't remember exactly what year it was. All I remember is the woman telling me that she had taken a bunch of photos with this photographer down in South Florida. And the photographer, many years later, a couple years later, meets this woman in Toronto who happens to live in Miami also, or outside of Miami. Um, They hook up, the photographer and the woman in Toronto. And he's got a cocaine problem, and he's all over the place. But he wanted to impress her by showing her this video that he had taken with a girl, Megan, many years earlier. She's very proud of the size of his penis. 
And again, all coked up, sent this video to the woman who contacted me. And after he sent the video to her, it had this second thought, oh my God, I shouldn't have sent that because Megan told him after they had made it that you must destroy that immediately. And he swore up and down that he had deleted that video to Megan. So Megan, all these years later, had no idea that this thing still existed. Now, this woman who was sent the video recognized her as an actress that was on the show Suits. And because of the fact that she was about to marry Harry, this woman in Toronto thought there was going to be a humongous payday, right? So she contacts me. She asked me if there's a secure way of talking. You know, she wanted to be in the cone of silence. And so, you know, between, she was on Skype at the time and she says, you know, do you have WhatsApp? Do you have Signal? Do you have telephone? I said, I've got it all, babe. What, what do you need? I said, what you really need to do is talk to my lawyer and find out, you know, what we have here because you're not a copyright holder and you're not really supposed to be in possession of that video. However, possession is nine tenths of the law. So you having it is problematic to the royal family right now and pretty problematic to Meghan Markle. So that being said, she tells me the, the story about the, the photographer. Okay, And in the tape, she's performing a sex act on him that's unbelievable. Okay? And filthy. And uh, again, she, he sent that video. Now she has the video and the photographer and the woman in Toronto had not spoken in many, many, many years. Okay. Okay, so I just want to clarify this. The yeah. woman that contacted you is the woman who this man who supposedly had sex with Meghan Markle yeah. sent her the tape in order to sell it and make money from it. Correct. That's the of it. And then she contacts you to say, hey, yeah. how, how can we distribute it? Are, the, this, are there any drawbacks or are there anything? What can we do with it? That's the gist mm -hmm. of it. Right? I then got her on the phone with my lawyer at the time. And uh, my lawyer spoke to her about it. We were both under the impression that she was still represented by another lawyer in Beverly Hills because, and I don't know if you know about this, but prior to this, she had some topless photos that had gotten leaked online. And we, we had called the lawyer and asked him, well, whatever happened to those topless photos? And the lawyer said, I got rid of those, but I no longer represent Meghan Markle. Oh. The, per the person who represents her is now Richard Gino, and that's the guy who I basically sent this email to, um, and this was dated February 8th, 2018. Rick spoke with the woman again, peddling these clips from the tape. She's definitely being discreet. She blocks her number or has a burner phone. She's not giving me an email address to send my NDA contract to either. She wants to sell this to the highest bidder and told me she's looking to call tablets next. She won't give me a screenshot of possession of anything without some solid guarantees or a roundabout number. I've done deals with like this with Marty and his partners and it requires a lot of my time and energy to be quite honest. If you're looking for me to get more involved I need a retainer from you going forward or I'd be happy to work with someone like Marty or Andrew or any of these other lawyers. Anyway, I feel confident we could shut this down or if you get rid of it, it would just require some time and the allure of some money for this woman. And that was sent. And then he had responded, Kevin, we'll give you a call tomorrow to discuss. Okay. Now, originally when the lawyer had hit me up, he says, it's not true. We know what you're talking about. And it's not her and blah, 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 blah. And I wrote back to him. It just dawned on me. How would you know 100% it's not her if you haven't seen this video or taken any screen grabs from it? So, I mean, he was trying to tell me he knows all about this, but it's not real and it didn't happen and blah, 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 blah. Mm -hmm. But again, I do this, man. I do this for a living. So I knew. I knew. And what did he say? Thing. How did you leave it with him then? Well, it gets better. <laughs> after, I, after I got done with the emails with this lawyer, the woman calls me from Toronto freaking out, freaking the fuck out. I go, what happened? She's like, I just got a call from the photographer in Florida who I haven't spoken to in over eight years. The guy who gave her the tape. Yeah. And screaming and yelling, I have to destroy this tape. They're coming after me. They just called me. I'm in a lot of trouble. Please destroy the tape. So if it wasn't real and it wasn't her. And by the way, 
I got a screenshot from that. Mm. And it's in my phone. Oh, my God. That is so awesome. Yeah. But then, then, then you never heard back from the lawyers or anything like that. Nope. Why so, do you suppose? Why do you suppose that is? Because they destroyed the tape, or they paid off the guy for the tape, or they threatened his life, a la Ray Donovan. You know, you mentioned Ray Donovan earlier. It's funny because I get compared to him a lot here in Hollywood because I'm what you call a fixer, right? Mm -hmm. um, But I'm the Jewish Ray Donovan. I don't kill anybody. I don't get my hands dirty. I, I, I have manicures. You know what I mean? But I, uh, I do have people that might be able to read your email. And that's pretty scary in itself, wouldn't you admit? I mean, look, it, every, everything that happens in this town is either manipulated or it's sugar-coated or it's spun in a way that It's not real. When they talk about Tinseltown, they talk about the, you know the Boulevard of Broken Dreams. This city has all of that, you know. But it also has the blood suckers, the leeches, you know, the scumbag uh, uh, stage parents, you know, the uh, lawyers. You got to understand something else, Paula. That when one of these scandals happens, there's a lot more people than just the celebrity that get affected by it, right? So the celebrity always has an entourage. That starts with a makeup artist, right? An agent, an assistant, a lawyer, an agent, a manager. There's six people right there that I just named that are dependent on that celebrity. So if that celebrity makes $20 million dollars a year, she can afford to employ all these people and make more money. But what happens when this thing hurts their career and shuts down whatever they got going on? Guess who now loses out of the money? The assistant, the agent, the manager, the lawyers. So they all want to make these things go away. Or in some cases, they'll all pony up money so they can keep the gravy train running. That's what goes on in this town. So, so there's a lot of... A lot right. of people are dependent on a lot of very successful celebrities out here. So basically, you contacted the lawyer, Meghan Markle's lawyer. You told him there's this thing going on around. Uh, what do you want me to do with it? You know, you know, you you gave him the options, I assume. And then he said, "Oh, that's not her." And then the next thing you know, the photographer who had given the tape to this woman in Toronto years earlier suddenly mm -hmm. contacted her out of the mm -hmm. blue, freaking out, asking freaking her. Out. For asking her to destroy the tape, and then you never heard anything from it again. Nope. And the guy, have you talked to the guy or the woman after? Never, never spoke to the photographer. I have no relationship with him. She had hit me up or something along the lines. Of, she told me that that happened, and then she went completely dark on me. But again, I know who the woman is. I know she's a very successful businesswoman, and I know that if she were watching your show, she would be freaking out right now. Actually, I'm going to be honest with you, Paula, and I knew that you weren't going to get this today. I, I knew that you woke up today not knowing what we were going to talk about or what was going to happen. No, no. So you probably you probably never expected to get this story because I've never talked about this. Story. I talked about it once on a podcast with Tom Segura and Christine Pajitsky called YMH, your mom's house dot com. Mm -hmm. And I never specifically said her name. I just said there was a woman who married into a family of royalty. And I kind of like skipped around it, but yeah. German press and all kinds of people picked up on it. And it's online if you Google it. No, I, Google, I, I saw you in that podcast with people talking and stuff like that. Yeah. But I'm very surprised, I got to tell you, because this is right around February 2018, which means that if this had gotten out, probably she wouldn't have married Harry. Well, I could tell you that the royal family would have put a kibosh on it. I think they would have. Uh, it's funny how it all turned out anyway. But do you think it, that the royal family was involved in any sense? Because you see, I don't see Meghan Markle having that kind of power to scare this guy off. You know, or this woman. I don't see her. Well, having here, that kind here's of power. The, so here's the thing. The lawyer that I worked with at the time, he said to me specifically, I don't want to touch this case. And I don't think you should either. In fact, if I were you, I would walk away very fast. And I said, why? You know, we all like money. 
And he said, because A, you don't want MI6 or Her Majesty's Secret Service or the FBI or Interpol looking into your affairs. Do you really need the aggravation? And I said, but Keith, <laughs> this is really her. We can prove it's her. And he goes, again, this woman doesn't have the legal right to put this tape out. And if she's trying to sell it back in such a way, if it's not done right, or she doesn't retain the right lawyers, and again, I'm not licensed to practice in England either. That was the other problem, is that we couldn't control what happens in, in, in London, right? So he was like, I would just assume walk away from this. There's just no upside to this, and it's all downside risk, and we don't need the aggravation. And that's why I walked away from it. It's just funny now that all these years later, you know, you found out how racist this family was toward her. You found out that she was so disliked. But I wonder if the family knows about this or knows that there might be other tapes. Who knows? You Who know, knows? You, you know what I think it's happened? Because I see Megan do this all the time, especially now, that she uses people's names. Like, for example, when she started dating Harry, she started going to restaurants and say, I'm, the pr I'm, I'm, I'm dating a prince. So to get herself the best tables and stuff like that to get herself in magazines when she suddenly found herself with a lot of you know that she was dating Harry because actually Buckingham Palace told her to shut up don't say anything because first of all she was not his type you know and given who she was they thought it, this was something that was going to fizzle out mm -hmm. you know? uh, and, and she was angry that the palace said you cannot comment on Harry's that you have a relationship with Harry and she hated keeping it quiet because, you know, she's all about PR. I mean, whether just the fact that she was dating Harry, that was enough to give her PR and she maximized it. So I wonder, because I do not see the royal family covering that up. I think that the royal family would have used that as, as a, to say to Harry, you know what? This can't go on because, I mean, they know that these kind of things have a nasty way of popping up. Oh, maybe. I mean, look, let, let, let's look at this. I agree with you 100%. But you also have to look at the gaffes that Harry had. And again, I'm not the expert that you are with, with Meghan and Harry. I do know this much. After working with TMZ and selling a lot of stories and following the tabloids and stuff, this man dressed as Adolf Hitler for Halloween. You know what I'm saying? Like, that is such a humongous uh, gaffe for any member of the royal family to do. So I think, you know, anything that Meghan did later on or anything, I mean, it's just, it's all hypocritical. And I felt like every part of this from the, the Queen's death and watching everything that happened with him being pretty much excised from the family, it, 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 it's shocking to me. But it also makes me wonder, like I said, how much more do they know about her that we don't know? Right. Yeah, yeah, that's the thing, you know, that I've been talking about in my channel, that the royal family must have known all about this. But they still allowed her to marry Harry because he's an idiot. And he was hell bent on marrying this woman. I don't know if to rebel, to rebel against the family or whatever, because, you know, I am sure that. But then again, uh, there's, they've done quite a few things. I'm just going to say I can't say the last name because I can't get banned. Right. But, you know, J.E. J.E. The one that died. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Epstein. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The one, I mean, it's it's uh, it's uh something that a lot of people, Meghan Markle was also in the Soho house. They said that she was um, a girl that was hired to walk VIPs and fill out the red carpets and stuff like that, you know. Um, Look, you I know mean, what? There's a bunch of girls like her. They call them uh, beverage girls. You know, there was these vodka models, uh, they start off doing promotional work. They hope to become actresses. They hope to become any type of celebrity. And they will do anything to get there. You know, when the Harvey Weinstein and the whole Me Too thing came up, I had so many women come yeah. out of the woodwork that were all telling me, oh, you know, this one promised me a, a role in the movie. This one did that. Megan kind of fits that same profile of the kind of woman that I deal with all the time. And, you know, they start their way up. They latch on to the first rich guy or famous guy they get that they meet at the Playboy Mansion or, or wherever they meet him. And that's it. This is their exit strategy. I'm going to marry this man 
he's going to take care of me the rest of my life. Yeah, but this woman, yeah, sorry, pardon, sorry. No, no, go ahead, go ahead. No, but this woman, as I said, she was living with Trevor Engelson. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is a woman who who, she herself has has never had to have have an additional work. Her father was the lighting Emmy winning director who was giving her his little princess everything she needed. Mm -hmm. Um, And she would make up these stories about, you know, her car door not working, which is not true. The father has already debunked that, how she had to go through the trunk because her car wouldn't open. I mean, and then how she met Ellen. And then when she actually was on Ellen, she and she didn't bring that up, you know, um, how she pretended to be friends with Hillary Clinton, no, with Michelle Obama. She implied that she was mm-hmm. when she was a chick, that she was having lunch with, you know, Michelle Obama. And I mean, this is a woman who, who clearly lying is not an issue. No, and again, it's part of the culture here in Los Angeles. I do know people that worked on the show Suits with her. Mm-hmm. Um, two people that I know said that she was wonderful and she was a nice woman to work with. The other person was like, she's a bitch. And, uh, you know, I don't doubt any of this shit for a moment because she thought she was entitled and she thought this. Never met her. I was just in Montecito three days ago, and I was literally four houses down from where they live. Uh, I have a client right now that I do publicity for who was involved in the whole Kevin Costner. Uh, oh, yes, yes, yes. So That's- he was he was the tenant. He was the tenant that was paying sixty five thousand dollars a month to live on the property, and Kevin's wife would sneak into the house and make herself a drink and, and get in his bed. And he'd be like, what are you doing in my house? Like, you're my landlord. you got to get out of here. And he wouldn't sleep with her. And she freaked out on him and then made a whole thing to get him out of the house. So that's Montecito is such a small, tranquil, probably the most beautiful place in the country as far as I'm concerned. And it's so weird that these people live in this tiny little enclave where Oprah and Ellen and, you know, Rob Lowe and, and like uber, uber rich people live in this little city outside of Santa Barbara. But Harry and Megan, they're seen all over town. Like I said, it's a very small town. And people kind of keep to themselves. Everybody knows when they walk into the steakhouse or they walk into a place, that's Harry and Megan. But they try to treat them like they're just like you and me. Which is yeah, odd. Yeah, it's I'm an sure odd thing. But how come if they're walking all over the place, how come the pops are not taking pictures of them? Because, you know, whenever you see a picture of Megan and Bagrid, does that mean that she phoned Bagrid? Because they make it sound like um, well, that they're Rid, all over the that, place. It's funny, I'm Alex from Bagrid. I just met Alex from Bagrid the other day. Um, there's pops that are out there, but they also work with all these PR people. And I think whenever you see... of the time when you see photos of people going out in public, they're staged. It's a publicist or somebody saying, hey, they're going to be, Britney Spears is going here at such and such time, you know, and then they get the photo, the photographers out there. Now with Harry, Harry and Meghan's a big beat. That's a big subject. So they have people on them pretty much every day, freelancers that are always out there. Right now I know there's three people that are out there right now looking for Harry and Meghan and they're looking for my client. That's how I know which paps are out there right now. But the uh, thing is that that's very surprising because maybe it's because of all the scandals and Spotify dropping them and everything that's been going on right now, but not because they're interesting. I think that right now the interest, it renewed, the interest was renewed because Spotify executive came out and called them uh, lazy well, effing grifters and then they... Yeah. they head of UTA, the United mm-hmm. Talent Agency, and the word of the agency, the middle word is talent, says that Megan has none. I well, mean, are, yeah, yeah, are, that's are true. They, are they seen, and I think that's what renewed it, but are they seen with the children ever in Montecito? I have never heard of anybody that saw them with the children out and about. But I will also say that <sighs> You know, it's it's a slippery slope. You know, if they were to ingratiate themselves with the press and become more friendly and more outward with these people, it wouldn't help. You know, 
in England, I deal with a lot of the tabloids, Daily Mail, The Sun, The Mirror. They are a hundred times bigger than they are here, obviously. And there is so much doubt and there's so much hate. And again, it also comes back to the fact that Netflix didn't find their show very interesting. They basically told them, look, you got to come up with some interesting stuff or we're not going to renew this. And Spotify obviously caught on. I think what happened is this love affair with her and Harry just kind of fizzled out. And I think everybody here in this country, you know, we love to, to build up celebrities because we love to tear down. And why do we love to tear down so much? Because we like to watch it, the Phoenix rise from the ashes again. It's such a dysfunctional relationship we have with celebrities in this country. So... It's it's actually quite um I gotta tell you I, it's actually quite um with them I think what people are angry at is that nobody she accused the royal family of being racist when that was not the case in her Netflix thing you know she said that she was never treated like a black woman until she got to the UK and then you know there's footage there's footage of her when she did that video in 2012 talking about racism <laughs> complaining about how racist the united states was mm-hmm. so i wonder you know because i've always said i mean i wonder if, if it's the fact that she was not criticized in the united kingdom i mean she was praised in the united kingdom because she was mixed race which is something that she didn't want to be reminded of i think that's for me because um because you know this is something that she didn't understand why people would celebrate her being mixed race when she all her life she's lived it as a white girl and a lot of people are wondering and then she started trashing her own family and i think the lies caught up with her you know there's just so many lies what do you think i think she's got multiple personality disorders again i'm not a psychologist or psychiatrist i can't diagnose somebody but my personal opinion is very much like kim kardashian um, Kim has attracted some of the craziest people into her life, right? And there's an old expression that water finds its own level, right? So for you to attract an anti-Semitic, bipolar, wacko guy like Kanye, and even before that, if you look at some of the other people she had been linked with, these are people, Pete Davidson, who just checked himself into rehab yeah. for borderline personality disorder. Now, Borderline personality disorder is basically bipolar. It's a nicer way of saying this is a manic depressant. So what happens when you meet somebody and you fall in love with a person like these people? That means that you're of the same water. You're at the same level as these people. You're just as crazy. And we know that Harry had a wild streak. He was a he was a drinker. He was a partier. You know, he he was a bloke that just liked to have a lot of fun and and he was inappropriate. And along comes Meghan Markle and she's like, you know, again, the water's at its own level and it found itself. It basically said, hey, here's somebody who's just like me. And Meghan's wild, dude. Like, I saw that tape and she was pretty sexual and it was pretty wild. So I, in my head, I'm going, okay, it makes sense. You know? I know when people say opposites attract. But I don't really think that's so much the case, especially not out here. I think people gravitate towards people like them. Yeah. Like, for instance, my friends out here, I've been out in California 26 years, but if you look at my inner sanctum of friends, they're all people that come from where I come from. They're either from Ohio or they're from back east. Mm-hmm. And, oh, shit. I can hear you. I just lost you. Hold on. Can you hear me? Yeah. Hold on. Uh, oh, I can hear you. Oh, you can hear I me. Can okay. Very weird. We can hear you fine. We can hear you. Okay. I have. Hold on a second. I'm going. All right. Now we're good. Now we're good. Okay. I don't know how this started, but I had music that came out of nowhere. <laughs> okay. Sorry, so, so, so for I, I agree with you. I've always said that you know people say, "Oh, Megan trick Harry." I think you know, unless Megan completely deceived him, you know, because they say that he's a that he's pretty stupid and his IQ is not on the level. Um, that I can see happening, 
because you see Trevor Engelson was a very sweet guy. This is why I was asking you for when she had this tape made because she was with Trevor Engelson for 10 years, living with him for 10 years. Um, and, uh, and then they got married, basically it was a 12 year relationship. And then it fell apart right when she started suits. She had, she was one year into suits when she, suits started to be successful. Um, and, and then she divorced them. And then she was with Corey Vitello for two years. And then in 2016, she met Harry. So we're looking that if the tape was made that, you know, she, they contacted you February, 2018, or, you know, things happen in 2018, um, you know, like, that means, yeah, 2010, she must have been married. It could have been before that, too. So but she I, was I'm living with the guy for 10 years. That's the thing. Again, you know, I don't know. Uh, but you just educated me on something I had no idea about. Because I don't really think about it. In fact, I hadn't really given much thought to the Harry Meghan thing in a while. I had a feeling we were going to talk about this because obviously I did my research on you and I was <laughs> like, okay, so she's going to want to talk about the sex tape. No, but it's, 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 to me, it's like how it, how these things happen because people say, oh, this is all fake. You know, people, so for me, it's important for my viewers to understand, first of all, what you do to give you credibility on what you do, what you've been involved in and how these right. things come to you. Mm -hmm. And how, if indeed the sex, and I believe, you know, when you say, because I don't think that this lady that you know, that, that pitched to the idea of the sex tape, she wouldn't lie to you about, you know, th that, right? Because now, it was in, in fact, in fact, she's so successful in the business that she's in and so high profile that I was shocked that she would even want to come forward and do anything that's risky. And she was scared shitless because she was like, look, I have a gigantic company. Um, I have money. I just want to know what this is worth. So I think there was a part of me that believed that maybe she wanted to get the photographer in trouble. Maybe the photographer blew her off at some point or something happened between them. I don't know. I just had a, uh, a feeling there was something more to the story with her. Because again, I checked her out. I knew people that knew her from Canada. And they were all like, yeah, she's the real deal. She's got money. Why? I'm like, I didn't tell anybody what it was that she had approached me with. I just said, hey, what do you know about this woman? And they're like, she's uber successful. So, oh, I don't know. What and is the that? The photographer is gone then, basically. What's that? The photographer is gone and this woman is no longer talking to you. Correct. And I guarantee you that the tape has been destroyed. Too bad you didn't keep a copy of it or make a copy of it, you know? Well, <laughs> allegedly. I'm Allegedly. just gonna say I'm just gonna say this. I have two screenshots from that day. Oh wow. And they're in a place that are being kept safe and uh, nobody could access. And again, without USC two two five seven, as I explained to you, those two forms of identification, I really can't prove that it's her because I didn't see that. It didn't accompany it. However, you put two and two together. You hear the story from the woman that contacted me. You see the tape. Oh, and by the way, there was another part that I didn't tell you. The way that I was able to ascertain that it really was her was I looked up stock photos. And in the sex tape, she's wearing a Cartier watch. It's a rectangular Cartier. Very expensive one. Oh, shoot. This was done then because she bought herself that Cartier watch when she became famous in suit, when she made it a big, a little bit big in suits. Wow, you really but know she, a lot of, you know a lot about this woman, has, Paul. She has given interviews and she said that when she finally thought that she was in a steady paycheck and she started like the, the, the series was taken off, that she bought herself a Cartier suit and she had what? it monogrammed in it and said that from Megan to Megan. I'm blown away by this right now because, honest to God, I had to look up picture after picture after picture to match the that was the watch. And you're telling me that she's actually going on record talking about yeah. buying well, this watch. I mean, but she lies so much. But she said that when she finally started getting a steady paycheck, when the season was picked up, when the, the thing was picked up and she started getting... Uh, guys, please correct me if I'm wrong. The, uh, Sal, you guys know this because... Um, she, if she was wearing that Cartier watch, she said that she bought it herself 
uh, to reward herself for actually making it in suits. If you look at it, she goes into, she did interviews with, what's his name? Uh, King, uh, that, that he used to do this older man. That, Larry, that, Larry King. Larry King. King. She's wearing the Cartier watch. And now this is why she wears Princess Diana's watch instead, because Princess Diana's watch is all made out of gold. Mm. First silver with gold. And she bought it. She said that someday uh, she would give it to her daughter, but then she mod she had it inscribed from Megan to Megan as a as a treat for her. So guys, can you tell me if it's true or not? Because I remember she talked about it, but this was when she made it in suits, and she was, yeah, she was making it, and she got a study page paycheck. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm mm -hmm. correct. Um, my watchers are are checking it out. Um, wow. You guys are really into this Harry Meghan. Let me, you know what? Now, now, this is why I'm saying, let me see something here. Megan. How happy are you that you have me on today? I'm very happy. Thank you. <laughs> what a, she what a revelation. What you say? And no, but she also, she did interviews about this. She's, uh, here we go. Meanwhile, Meghan actually sported the elegant Cartier tank design long before she met Harry. The former suit star bought herself a two-tone version of the tank Frances back in 2012. So that tape, that's her. Yeah, that's her. This so is David Feblin. There's also a movie that she does that she's pulling the guy's pants and, you know, whatever, you know. But this is in 2012 that she, that, because there's that movie, you've seen that the screenshots all over the place because she she did a cameo on a guy that she's pulling his pants down, you know, and. Wait, and, so you're saying, you're saying that this is from a movie? Yeah, she did a movie. She did a movie. Uh, I don't know, but it looks like that movie. There's a movie out there where, why I even posted them. Everybody's posted them online that she's done a movie where she's going, you know, and yeah. then southern regions of the guy and, and and it's all over the internet but this is supposed to be from a movie a cameo she did in a movie that's well known in, in the internet well I looked at that clip and I had to zoom in and I saw the Cartier and then I looked at the sex tape and I saw the Cartier and I was like it would be a really weird coincidence that she would actually have that watch if it wasn't her yeah, it was 2012 that she bought it for herself. So we're talking that it happened between 2012 uh, when she was definitely, um, she was just getting divorced from uh, Trevor and she was hooked up with Corey Vitello. Or she was in between boyfriends kind of thing, you know, or when she dumped uh, Trevor and, and she was, you know, yeah. So it must have been, if it's 2012, she just divorced Trevor. Maybe, maybe. And again, I'm just hypothesizing and speculating, okay? And maybe that's why she was so emphatic about him deleting this video. Yeah. It was because she was with somebody that she didn't want them knowing. Yeah, because this is... This is right after she divorced Trevor, because this is four years prior to her meeting Harry. And it's right around the time she dumped uh, her ex-husband. She FedExed her ex-husband, Trevor Engelson, the ring and said, you know, we're, you know, she served him divorce papers when he was getting ready to go visit her in Toronto. You know what? I give her, I give her credit for that, because when I broke off my engagement and I asked for my ring back, my ex gave me all kinds of shit about it. And then I finally had a threat and I said, listen, we're not getting married and um you know it was a gift it's not a gift it was a promise of marriage and we're not getting married so you know send me the ring back and then finally she did find exit pack but i had a fight with her about it well the ring wasn't that big nothing compared to the one that harry has because she didn't send him back she had a cart he gave her a cartier bracelet that's very expensive that she still wears to this day uh -huh. So she didn't send that one back. Probably she sent the, I think she sent the, the wedding ring back, not the engagement ring, mm. you wow. know, but it was, he was actually, it was completely out of the blue for him. I think it was at the end of, uh, at the end of 2011. And then she was, because she was successful in suits and now she didn't want to have anything to do with him. So if, that, if she's wearing that Cartier watch, it's actually, this is when she was in between jobs and she came um, when she was finished with suits she went over to the UK and befriended quite a lot of people. 
um, to see if she could find a British man to marry. Mm. She befriended a lady, very well-known lady in the UK called Lisa Cundy. Um, and then she goes to her because she, you know, she was been written out of suit. She hadn't sealed the deal with Harry. She hadn't even met Harry when she came over to the UK and suits was fading out. He started mm. coming to the UK and suits was fading out. She was being written out. Um, so she came over to the UK to, because she was looking to start in a show called Made in Chelsea, which is a reality show. But they did not, she didn't make the cut, you know, kind of thing. And then uh, she befriended Lisa Candy. This is when she w started talking to Pierce Morgan. She befriended Pierce Morgan on Instagram or Twitter, or whatever. And then, you know, Pierce Morgan was clearly a much bigger star. And then she ghosted him. She met him right before she went on that day with Harry on July 1st. Hey, you guys. Diana, yeah. You are the official source and all things Meghan Markle. I don't know, but it's, it's just that this is out in the open. This is something that's been out on the open, but we don't know if it lies or not because there's no change. And again, I would be interested, like I, I, I've made the mistake of Googling myself a couple times, and there's quotes from these people that have seen my interview with Tom Segura on YMH, oh. and they all go, if it's not true, and why hasn't Kevin not gotten sued, right? How come KB hasn't been sued yet? I mean, if, obviously, if what he's saying is false, he would have gotten a cease and desist, or he would have had some kind of legal stuff. So maybe after being on your YouTube channel today, let's see what happens. I'm going to pretty much guarantee you that I don't get any type of phone call. Well, you were on that Pasha lady, that 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 lady in, from New York. She's really funny, by the way. I love her channel. Yeah, she's crazy. And, and, and she talked about it, and and she didn't even want to use Meghan Markle's name. This is the thing I don't get. Why are people so terrified? You know, um, or maybe well, in her case, in her case, she was already being sued by Cardi B, and she lost four million dollar judgments. So I think that's probably why she was a little oh. squeamish. Oh, okay, okay. So, the, but for um, maybe the reason why you're not sued is because they feel that the tape has been destroyed and it's never going to see the light of day. Or maybe they don't know if I have a screen grab or a copy of it and they are afraid uh, that... Uh, you don't know if you have a copy of the tape. That's another thing. Uh, I mean, I, I, I didn't have to sign any type of confidentiality. I didn't... Uh, they just ignored me as if I was just somebody who didn't know what the hell I was talking about. So, and that happens... Nowadays, it doesn't happen as much because they Google me and they go, oh, shit, we're fucked. You know, he's got the real deal. Well, we should listen to him. Oh, my God, Kevin, you know, but I, I, I'm just very shocked because people have been saying, oh, you know, that it's a lie. It's a lie. She's never done it. You know, this guy was lying. And I'm like, Meghan Markle is very litigious. Yeah. As we all know. Mm -hmm. I mean, we know that she lied to the UK courts. She basically committed perjury. You know, when she said that she'd never contacted the, the, the authors of Finding Freedom and then or th that she never briefed anything against her sister, Samantha Markle. And it turns out that, yes, she had in writing. I know you nothing know? about any of that. I don't follow it that closely. So. Oh, yeah. Right now, his sister's suing her in the United States and Florida. Let me something. ask you, can, can I ask your viewers a question? Yeah, of course. And, and, and you as well, because I would love to get your feedback. This is something completely different. I had a meeting last Friday with a Hollywood producer slash director who's got the number one documentary on Amazon right now. And she's very interested about doing a documentary on my life and about what I do. And I had pitched her an idea. And the idea was basically part one, it's a part three series of documentary that the first part would be the rise and fall of the adult internet business. Mm -hmm. You know, prior to Pornhub and all that stuff, people used to pay twenty nine ninety five a month to subscribe to a porn website. That all went out of the way when Pornhub came in and uh, cannibalized the business. After that happened, I found myself trying to reinvent myself and go to TMZ and doing celebrity gossip because celebrity gossip became the new porn for me. And I started seeing where Lindsay Lohan and Paris and, and Tim and all these people more people were Googling and looking up searches on these people than any porn star I ever dealt with. So it kind of takes you through that period of the early 2000s, which I'm also in a documentary that comes out August 8th. I think I gave you a 
the yeah, background. Yeah, it's on the link right now. Everybody go check it out because I posted all your info in the link here. So let's yeah, It's going to be, it, it's coming out on Vice TV and Hulu. It'll be on Hulu uh, August 8th. And it's called The Dark Side of the 2000s. It's all about me working with TMZ, supplying them with all these stories as an insider. And then the part three of the documentary would be pretty much talking about how I turned fixer from a guy who put out all these sex tapes to a guy who's trying to buy back the sex tapes to a guy who now helps people get rid of bad stuff online. Do you think that's something people would want to see or do you think? Absolutely. Hey, too- I would love to see that. Okay. I just don't know if I'm too close to it. I don't right? know. No, no, no. I would love to see that. I mean, I, I, when, I, when you, just the title is pretty cool because, you know, it, it, got, it kind of gets into all this culture of these people and why everything is so messed up right now. Mm-hmm. I agree. And I think that people have to understand where we are today because of the actions that we had. Look, TMZ helped make a lot of stupid people famous. And then once social media went to where it went with TikTok and Twitter, I think that the the whole psyche of this country and of the world is about likes. It's about views. It's about uh, you know instant gratification. And I think that's something that is something to look into. You know. No, but that's absolutely that'd be very interesting. That, are you kidding? That'd be very. Uh, I mean, everybody's saying yes here. You know. So yeah, I I I I'd be one to watch. You know for sure. You know. Cool. Oh, that's good. I I was, uh, I was really, you know, I'm on the fence about it because, you know, there's another expression I like to use and that is the only time whales get a harpoon is when they come up to spout. So I don't like to spout that often these days. Because you're going to be touching a lot of very um, powerful people that, you know, especially powerful woke people like, I don't know, Oprah Winfrey and who are friends with a lot of these people probably, you know, Oh, I don't give a shit. I don't give a shit about that. Uh, you know what? The truth is the truth. And, you know, people either like me or they hate me. There's really no in between. It's either you love people who like to speak the truth and don't care about the repercussions, or you, you hate him because he's that guy that speaks the truth, right? And so I just wonder where we are. I mean, look, Donald Trump in this country changed so much shit. And it fucked up this whole country as far as, you know, people just believing bullshit. And this guy could go out and say anything he wanted and people just ate it up and they believed that he was this real successful businessman and, you know, that he didn't rape women and that he didn't do this or do. And now we see the society in general has just kind of followed Donald Trump and people go out there and they say things and they do things. And um, they don't even think about the legal repercussions of getting sued for lying or, or misrepresenting themselves. So I don't know. I, I think, I think people would want to see this documentary and I'm hoping that uh, they green light it. I'll know soon. Oh, Knock on wood. I, oh, uh, yeah, I hope so. I really, really hope so. You know, so, oh my goodness, you know, Kevin, you've been such a great guest. Thank you. Thanks for being here. We should have you again. By the way, uh, I will ask you, I'll send you an email. I'll send you my phone number. You know, you don't have to share yours. I love that. And, and uh, for you can WhatsApp me. And then, uh, and uh, I don't know, I'm, I'm, we might be doing a live and Sean Atwood, who's a big channel. Uh, they really want you there. Um, and Love uh, to do it. As you can see, I don't really hold back. So Awesome. I, well, yeah, so yeah. I'll tell Sean, and we will get you sorted out because we're going to have a couple of very interesting guests, you know, mm-hmm. a lot of stuff that we talk about. Um, so it should be very interesting to have you there. We're trying to aim for Saturday at 8 p.m. UK time. I don't know what it is, but I'll, I'll find out what time it is in L.A. But we're very flexible with the time, you know, um, but it will be alive. And then, um, I mean, you've been so generous with, 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 with your knowledge and whatever it is that you have. Um, and well, like, I, like I said, you know, I, I, wasn't, I wasn't familiar with your podcast. I wasn't familiar with your YouTube channel at all. And like I said, I do these because I never know what's behind door number one, door number two, and door number two. Somebody could be watching this right now that has a sex tape and doesn't know what to do with it or has a picture of a celebrity or was scared about doing something. And, you know, I invite you. You could DM me on Instagram. I answer everything. There was an article about me um, about two years ago. It was printed in Wired magazine. If you Google Wired and Kevin Blatt, it'll pop up about the whole uh, 
business of hush money and sex tapes and extortion and what goes on in this town. But again, if you have something out there and you know, you, if you want to talk to me confidentially, confidentially, I will keep everything between us. Uh, if you just want to pick my brain to see if what you have is worthwhile, just hit me up. Oh, then you're going to love being in Sean Atwood because he has over 780,000 subscribers on YouTube. He's actually quite big. So wow. you're going to hit a big audience because it's a worldwide audience. He's written books about, you know, all kinds of things. I mean, Madeline McCann, John Benet, all kinds of people, you know. Uh, so it is going to be very interesting because I'm sure that there's, you're going to get quite a few customers <laughs> from being on that live. You know? Well, you know, I, I, like I said, I, um, I'm embracing YouTube. I'm embracing. I used to do a lot of media and now I don't do media as much as I used to because there's no reach. This gets more reach than doing the 60 minutes or doing, you know, 2020 or any of these other shows, believe it or not. So but there's uh, a lot of censorship in YouTube. For example, you have no idea for me to upload a video and you've seen my videos. I mean, they're pretty harmless. Mm -hmm. And even the title, sometimes I have to change it and change it because if I put something in the title, then it won't let me upload it. Or even if I manage to upload it, then I get a, an email. You have to remove the title. You know, the, and you've seen my you have to, Yeah, you have to use neutral words and you have to shy away from rights of publicity. Again, this is what I do for a living with reputation management. So I understand why Google pulls some things and some things get listed to the top and some things don't. That's the other side of my business. In addition to removing content, I promote stuff. And I could take your company or your product and put it within the top three searches on Google for just about anything. And of course, it's not cheap to do this, but it's a great ability to have. And I have the, the, tech, the technical know-how and I've got the staff behind me that does it and we do it better than anybody. So then you're going to you're going to get because you're going to uh, yeah we definitely have to do the show not thing so uh so we can um because it's a much bigger audience um i would love to yeah and you know believe it or not i i get death threats there was even an article in geo tv something that because of me mega markle was having mar marital issues you know yeah. and then shallon lester doing uh i mean shallon lester she was even depicted in the Netflix thing as though, you know, this cabal thing of people were apparently middle-aged cabal women out to destroy poor little Megan, you know? Um, so it's interesting. So I'll send you all the details for Saturday. And thank you so very much for, for having been here. I've had you for almost an hour and 15 minutes. It's okay. Um, I'm just about to take my medicine. So uh... yeah, no, but thank you. I'll send you right now an email. Please go follow him on Twitter. Follow him on Instagram. Let's show him love because he got a lot of subscribers and stuff from the other channels. So I want him to get more from my, and even though my channel is smaller. Please. So, and, and, and please, the dark side of the two thousands by Kevin Blatt, and he will definitely be with well, us. Well, it's not, it's not by Kevin Blatt. It's the dark side of the two thousands for vice TV and it'll be on Hulu. I'm just a featured guest on it, but as well, you can you imagine, go. I'm the no bullshitter on the uh, thing. I'm the awesome. one that tells, tells it like it is. And I'll send you the details for Sean Adwoods and, and yeah. my phone number so we can connect better if you like. And I'll put you in you touch with this manager so he can also set it up for you. Okay, sweetie? Fantastic. It was so nice meeting you. I really enjoyed this. I know. Thank you so much. I loved having you. Thank you, Kevin. And by the way, great questions from your viewers. I really appreciated how smart these questions were. They were very well done. Well, yes, yes, they were. So thank you, guys. Thanks for being here. And thanks for supporting him. Thank you very much, guys. Thank you.